Assalamu alaikum. Today I'm not going to talk about the technicalities of my artistic process or how I approach a subject. Instead, let's open a dialogue about the universal challenges we all encounter. Those moments of our silent struggle, the battles we face behind the camera or the canvas, those fights which end up draining our energies in that process, we all endure our own struggle. As a creative soul with a vision, with a sense of direction, I must confess, I have an inborn desire to fix things. Be it an injured bird or the silent struggles of strangers, I somehow find myself drawn to their stories and I offer them a listening ear by attempting to be there for them. While some people just sit all day doing nothing, just to pass time and the damaged dignity of others and just to merely survive. That's not life. In my art sessions, where individuals gather for art mentorship, uh, a shared silence is broken and stories of trauma unfolds. And I become witness to their experiences and their pain. So, as a teacher, I strive to introduce new perspectives to be a positive force in their life. As an artist, a painter, an observer, I believe it is crucial for people to see life from different angles. This is challenging and sometimes I do lose myself being disconnected from people for a short period of time. Because you see, life is a series of chapters and we must try to navigate each one. I'm constantly reminding even my own self and others that, hey, this is not the end. Behind all this wisdom I share, my own life's canvas is painted with a decade-long struggle or call it a journey of being uh, a toxic and a traumatizing environment. Balancing myself while caring for others in such circumstances has been an impossible task and the intensity of which words can scarcely convey. So I know this resonates and many of you can feel what I'm exactly trying to convey to you because I know that you're human. So why do we constantly dwell in our own thoughts? Why do we distinguish between good and bad? As artists, I believe we live in a realm of motivation, imagination, daydreams and observations. So we absorb the, whatever's happening around us, the world experiences, both negative and positive, we absorb them like a sponge. And this impacts our thoughts in our own heads. As a person, uh, as a thinker and a friend, I can confidently say that I understand the highs and lows you may have also encountered in your personal and your professional life. Consider this, our thought process during toxic experiences or traumatizing can detrimentally impact our life and our work. So negative thoughts about our well-being interfere with our inspiration, with our daily motivation and our self-worth. So they directly affect our productivity. Your thoughts, uh, they generate a momentum and dwelling on negative ones create momentum that hinders our productivity. So reflect on this for a second. Our thoughts matter and we feel linger in negativity we produce a momentum that won't serve us well in any aspect of life.
There's this beautiful book by Charlie McKessy, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. There's this quote where the boy is facing an uncertain path, and he says to the horse, I can't see your way through. And the horse responds, Can you see your next step? And the boy says, Yes. The horse wisely advises, Then just take that step. But look how far we've come. I just don't think I can do this. I'm never going to find a home. You know, sometimes your mind plays tricks on you. It can tell you you're no good, that it's all hopeless. But I've discovered this. You are loved and important. And you bring to this world things that no one else can. So hold on. So we often fixate on the destination, worrying about too much about the future, and we feel emotionally overwhelmed by the length of our journey. Instead, we should consider just taking that one step. With each one step, you get closer. With every failure, you come close to your destination. And in times of uncertainty, this course serves as a gentle reminder that sometimes all we need is just to take that one step. So as an artist, you need to remember that the act to move to pick up your pencil, brush, camera, or musical instrument, or whatever that is, the act of planning to do, and something might, you know, uh, seem a bit lame or a waste of time, but you're going to see with that act of movement, with that intentions, you will engage those neurons in your brain, which will fire off and it will lead to triggering of an idea. And this is the first step. Now let's talk about perfectionism. So I, in my own head, there's this Beethoven, there's this Zeus and the teacher from Pink Floyd <laughs> album who lives in our brain and he's shouting, this is the standard thou must achieve. With this, we tend to devalue our own work uh, by listening to this voice and we judge our own work so critically, so negatively, that this is not the right, the correct approach. So the correct way is look at your work objectively, analyze your weaknesses and your strengths, be unbiased. This allows you to balance your growth. This approach is not governed by negative emotions. Rather, you look forward to making things right in the next step. You know, your intentions are to make a strategic choice in the productive and the conducive direction. If by far, any thought is still leading you to think that you should give up and it is pushing you, compelling you to give up, then you're doing it wrong, my friend. As a professional teacher, as a professional artist, from my own experiences, if I compare myself with the rest of the industry, in terms of Everybody else, and I guarantee you, I rank in the lowest of them all. I'm objectively aware of the fact that I'm nowhere near the master that I wanted to become. At a certain point, I came to a conclusion that I need to be more authentic and to be myself and what feels right to me. 
So that is based on law and logic. And I'm living in this world where I represent and contribute a certain value and skill to inspire and motivate like-minded people. So I've come to the point where I have realized that being the best is not what matters the most to me. In my opinion, it's about the community that I'm a part of. What does it mean to be a skilled mentor? How to teach better? Not everyone can teach. And who am I associating myself with my art? How does, you know, I'm asking myself these questions. How does my style and expression of art and video making connect emotionally and visually with my fellow artists, with my clients and viewers? Whether I'm the best of the best or not. So what matters is if I'm being true and honest to myself. Now about this painting that I've been working on. It shows a young boy in pursuit and he is physically strong. He has an athletic build and he's seated on a majestic brown mare, which is a female horse. He's shirtless while wearing a white shalwar and casually has tied his red shirt around his waist, giving off the vibe of a laid back strength. But here's the kicker. His gaze, his gaze is humble and is looking down. He's looking down deep in thought mid there's some sort of contemplation. Maybe there's some sort of sad realization of life where him and his companion have traveled to. So the landscape is serene, the beautiful vanilla peach sky and a lot of breathing space all around. So you can almost feel, when, you, when you're looking at my work, you can almost feel the tranquility, the positive, peaceful energy. And somebody, one of my students pointed out that somehow there's this spiritual synergy uh, in my works. Uh, so the synergy between the boy and the horse and the distance they have traveled together. So you see how everything comes together? It's not just a boy on a horse, it's a partnership like they've been through some stuff together, some hardships. And the backdrop, a dreamy canvas of pink peach skies, a soft warm horizon transitioning into the light blue sky on top. So it's like the universe itself is setting the stage for something majestic that's going to happen. So this painting isn't just strokes on canvas, it's a story. It's narrating something. It's about the strength to endure, to carry on, even when life feels like a wild ride. The shirt around his waist, that's not just an accessory, it's a symbol. It's like the casual armor he wears in the chaos of life. A reminder that he's adapting, he's making things work. And that humble gaze is like an invitation for the viewer to step into his world, to share a moment of vulnerability and strength simultaneously. This painting isn't about the physical, uh, it's about the portrayal of emotional journey we'll all go through. As your viewer gazes at this painting, I want them to feel the rawness of human experience, the beauty in the struggle and the failures, and the quiet strength that comes from embracing every step of the journey. This isn't just art, it's a conversation. It's a connection, a shared experience on the canvas. Thank you for watching.